Cisco Secure Workload, Labels and Scopes. All right, there's lots of ways of importing the data into Cisco Secure Workload. This could be through third-party tools and integrations like ServiceNow, your IPAM, DNS, and many others. We're gonna do it manually using a CSV just to show you the power of labels or tags and how they can be used to build a scope tree and define where assets may reside where then we can later build our host-based micro-segmentation controls. So we've got a column here with IPs. Now, when you start moving right, you see that we're being very selective of where the tags are starting to be applied. So, for example, org name, in this case, everything is assigned my org. We've got zones, host name, application group, application name, application environment, and application type and then shared services yes or no and so if we use for example app environment equals production then those assets that are labeled or assigned that tag will automatically fall into that scope now scopes are just containers that allow us to put workloads in and build potentially micro segmentation policies and assign them to those scopes now we've imported the labels and now they're ready to be used. So let's go ahead and build out our scope tree. So we're gonna start under the root here and we're gonna call it my org. And now we're gonna build our query and we're gonna use the labels that we've imported. So org name, equals my org. Now this will include every asset that we've tagged or labeled as my org. Pretty powerful because I don't have to remember the IP addresses anymore. I can use the labels or tags to define what assets go into what scopes and I can use them even later in inventory filters to build out workload policies. Now the next one we're going to create is data center. So this again is going to be a child scope of my org, which is a child scope of the root scope. And we'll go ahead and we'll create the query. In this case, it's going to be zone data center. And in my case, the DMZ just based on my lab is also part of the data center. I might have kept this different, but in this use case, and scenario I'm going to include it here go ahead and hit next and now all of the workloads that fall under data center and DMZ will will be assigned to this specific scope now you can see I went back up one level and I'm going to create another one called campus now I don't have any hosts here but I could and they'll fall under the campus scope so zone equals in this case inside remember there's an IP block that's assigned to that label or tag so now I have two scopes at the same level this allows me to build a policy as high up as my org but if I wanted to be specific for campus or data center or business partner whatever it might be I can do that without impacting the other scopes at the same level. Now let's go ahead back into data center and we're going to create a couple of scopes here specifically for data center. For the first one, it's going to be web services. This time we're actually going to use one of the types here called web services or servers. And this is going to just change the icon that shows up in the scope tree. So app group equals web. And again, these can be anything you want. It doesn't even have to be called app group. It could be whatever name you want that makes sense for your business or organization. Now we'll go ahead and create another one called shared services, again, at the data center level. And let's grab the one that says shared services. There it is. And the query here is going to be shared services equals yes. And now what you might be seeing is you're starting to see the number of assets assigned to this scope significantly reduced 
than the higher level scopes that we've seen earlier. So shared services only has two hosts in it. All right, in shared services, we're just gonna be a little bit more granular. Again, my environment's gonna be small, but the idea here is, is that I'm building this out to give me a little bit more option in how I build policy. So I'm gonna create one called infrastructure, and it's called infra for app type. And again, those same two hosts are gonna carry through here. And then you might have one called production and another called test or UAT. And again, um, the proper host should fall under the proper scope. So this one's production app underscore environment equals production. And now it's still only going to grab or the goal here is only to grab the in my case the NTP servers so we're gonna call we're also gonna call out app group um, and equals time because we tag the NTP servers with with the app group of uh, label of time so we've got multiple shared services scopes and now we're gonna work on the web services side so again web services you might have retail you might have finance etc whatever makes sense to you in my case i'm going to put in retail it's web servers again so that's going to carry through application type equals retail we'll go ahead and hit next and you're going to see here the p and the t at the end of those host names p is production t is test so that's fine, I've got retail, but I wanna separate both production and the retail environment. So I'll create one called production underneath retail, app environment equals production. And app, and app group equals web go ahead and hit next and we should only see two items here so there's two production systems they're now in that scope and we'll create one more and when we start going through and building policy you're really going to see the power of these scopes and why they're critically important when you're building out your workload policies the creation of the scope tree is something that you want to put a little bit of thought around in order to make sure that the policies that you want to apply are in fact applied to the right assets that are assigned to the proper scopes all right so now we've got retail production test we've got our scope tree fully defined here for our use case let's stretch it out make sure we've got everything that we need here everything looks good all right and now it's time to go to the next step where we start building out policies and validating that the control is in place